Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 733. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, Excel Magic Trick 733 to 735, click on the link directly below the video. In this video here, we want to uh, look at how to calculate expected return. And we ultimately want to see how to create a formula in a second cell. Now, the point of this video is I've done other videos in stats class and whatnot to show how to do this. But in, in this video, I want to show the mo a ro more robust formula that can handle things like if you have an NA typed into a cell, Control Z. Now, how do you calculate? a expected value for our po portfolio of stocks. Well, stock A, stock B, we have 60% in stock A and 40% in stock B. That's the weight. We have our economic state, bad, OK, great, the probability for each. And then here's what we've estimated. So for stock A, we 10% in a bad economy, 5% in an OK, 10% in a great. Actually, this is supposed to be um, minus. And then similar, we ha similarly, we have our uh, estimated uh, returns for each economic state here. So how do we calculate expected return? Well, ultimately, we need to say the estimated stock times the probability times the weight, and then go to this one, expected uh, return time, I mean, the estimated return times the probability of the bad state times this weight. All right? So we can do this simply by um, using up a bunch of real estate. We could just put all the values here and then add them. Highlight all the cells and in that active cell I'm going to say equals that times and this one right here we need locked going down but not to the side. So I'm going to hit the F4 key, F4 key, lock the row reference but not the column. Similarly for this one it's got to be locked going to the side but not when we copy it down. So I'm going to hit F4, F4, F4. Control Enter populates all of these cells with this formula. And then we simply add Alt equals. And so we have quite a terrible return. Well, that's to be expected given uh, in 2010 where we have some uh, bad probabilities associated with all these economic states. Um, now, we want to see how to do this all in one cell. OK, so we come down here. Now, think about this. Well, what do we do? We really, if we were going to use arrays, we'd say this whole range times this range times this range. So you can do that using the sum function. Sum cannot uh, do array multiplying, but no problem. We're going to force it. I'm going to do that. That range times this range times this range. Close parentheses. Now, uh, a formula like this, anytime you do an operation on arrays, you're in the realm of, it's no longer a regular formula, it's an array formula. So to tell Excel that you've done an array formula and you want it to actually work, you have to hold Control Shift and then hit Enter. Control Shift Enter is you telling Excel, I am creating an array formula. Those curly brackets are Excel telling you this is an array formula. OK, so that worked, all one cell. That's really cool, because it avoids having to do all these extra calculations. Now, we can avoid Control-Shift-Enter and those curly brackets by using the sum product. Now, the sum product has can handle arrays, and so there's multiple arrays. So we can just highlight, and then comma to get to the next uh, argument, and then, and then comma, so we have three arrays. Now, this is not going to work. And the reason why is because sum product, when you're multiplying arrays, which is what sum product does, they have to be the same dimension. These are not the same dimension. This is three rows by two columns. This is three rows by one column, one row by two columns. No problem. We can get around that. Instead of using three arrays, we're going to use one array and use multiplying, just like we did with the sum function. Now that's pretty cool, right? We hit Enter, no problem. No curly brackets, and I didn't do Control Shift Enter. Now here's the point of the video. If you come up here and you actually type in something like NA, whoops, that cell is getting an error because you can't multiply words times numbers. You just can't do that. That's getting an error because it's adding. But so are these. These are doing multiplying, and there's a word and a number. So we want to see how to get around this. I'm going to. Go like this and 
right click hide. I just want to temporarily hide these. We want to look at a way to get around this. We're still going to use some product because it's very cool for multiplying arrays without control shift enter. But we want to look at the mmult, mmult as I always like to call it, function. Now what does the mmult function do? I'm going to highlight this right. Well, no, I'm not. There's the mult. That's the name of this function. It actually does matrix algebra. No problem. If we're doing some product, it, we could, if we had two arrays that were the same size, I'm going to escape this size and another one exactly this size, some product would work. Well, we can create an array by multiplying using matrix algebra one column by three rows times two columns by one row. Now, the res when you do matrix algebra like this, the resultant array is the size of it is determined by you ask the question, in the first one, how many rows are there? One, two, three. In the second one, how many columns are there? One, two. And I always think of it this way, right? RC cola. Number of rows from the first and number of columns for the second. So row, column, RC cola. So when we multiply these together, it'll give us a range exactly the same size as this. Now let's see how the mult, the mult function works um, in cells, because it should multiply um, and give us exactly this range right here, or this uh, array size. So equals an array 1, I'm going to say, and that one's got to be first, because that's going to determine the number of rows, comma, and then. Now this is an array function, so I'm going to hold Control Shift and Enter. Now I want to come up here and just for a moment do this mult. I always say mult. And now, we saw that with Mamult, we entered it in the cells and it gave us the values, but what about if it's a, this is inside another uh, function or formula? Well, I'm going to highlight and hit F9. Notice it gives us a 3 and a 2, just like there, a 24 and a 16, just like there, and a 6 and a 4, just like there. Now, in array syntax, a comma means column, and a semicolon means go down to the next row. All right, so I'm going to control Z on that. F9 to evaluate, control Z to undo. And now we have our array we can multiply by this one. Some product. So that's our first array comma in our second array. Boom, we got it. Both arrays are the same size and it will not get an error. I'm going to right click unhide unhide. Actually, maybe I'll hide these ones. Now, two last points. Um, I didn't mention about the uh, resultant. We, I mean, I mentioned about the resultant array when you're doing uh, matrix multiplying here, matrix algebra. Ah, but the number of rows here has to be num the same as the number of columns here in order for you to do multiplying in the first place. One final note, the reason that this formula works and ignores that is that some product itself uh, treats that as a zero. Anytime it sees a non-numeric entry, it treats it as zero. And so zero times this times this doesn't affect our calculation. All right, uh, we'll see you next trick.